I was a sophomore in college when I was assaulted. I was only four. I've attended many parole hearings for my mother's killer. I felt helpless. But now I have a voice. Because I'm not alone. Because I can. I Can Crime Victims Assistance Network provides comprehensive victim services, including counseling and assistance at parole hearings free of charge to victims and survivors of violence. Visit ICAN-Foundation.org. We're here to help. The project was supported by funding awarded by Federal Grant Fund 2019-V2GX0053 through the Cal OES. Many Wall Streeters are predicting the inflation plane is ready to take off. At Owning, we still have a few refi seats left with 30-year fixed 2 and 3 quarter percent rate in APR with no closing costs on them. If the experts are right and the inflation plane flies high, APRs this low may be a distant dream. Don't mess around. Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com before the refi market flies completely away from you. Maybe the experts are wrong and rates don't go up any higher. But if they're right and the plane is flying with mortgage rates reaching the fours, you'll kick yourself hard that you didn't grab a seat now. Don't be a dummy. Save the money. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. Subject to credit approval. Call 833-852-6464 for terms and conditions. Equal housing lender. Call 833-2-OWNING for a 30-year fixed refi with a 2 and 3 quarter percent rate in APR today. That's 833-2-OWNING or owning.com. There seems to be this thought process that's going on with Yankee fans that if they lose this game or if they had not made the playoffs, that there was definitely going to be major change. Now, I did say for weeks here that if they didn't make the playoffs and then they just stuck with the same mentality going into next year, like that would be a problem. I felt like something did need to change. But I don't know, after watching them celebrate, listening to Aaron Boone talk about the relief of making the playoffs, it sounds like to me that regardless of what happens tonight, that there's not going to be a ton of change going into next year. And what would that change be, really? I mean, are you going to trade Aaron Judge? No, you're not going to do that. Are you going, you're not getting rid of John Carlos Stanton after the way that he played? Oh, thank you, Boomer. I appreciate that. Yeah, nice black coffee. They're closed downstairs. They're closed? Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. 7 10 on a Tuesday? In Starbucks October? Starbucks not closed? open. It's like it's, it's, it's pathetic. It's a, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. Yes, it is. But I just don't think, and what I was saying, Boomer, as you were getting me a coffee, it was so nice of you. You're welcome. That uh, you dress so nice today. Uh, you know, yeah, yes. I, I'm, this is a little treat for the way that I dress. Yeah. Um, I just don't think, regardless of the outcome tonight, that there's going to be major changes in the Yankees' world next year. Now. Oh, they're going to be in, in the market for a shortstop. Well, that, yes, but I'm talking about like, change. But like Aaron Boone's going to come back, Brian Cashman's going to come back, and then the core of the team is going to remain the same. Like, What would be the big moves? Gary Sanchez, gone? Would that be it? Yeah, I, I'll tell you, their bullpen is loaded for next year. Glaber Torres, gone? Would that be it? <clears throat> You know, next. So I don't know how far they're going to go this year. I, I mean, like for whatever reason, like teams like San Francisco, L.A., and Tampa, they seem to be have it all going on. The White Sox have had it going on this yeah. year, but the Yankees beat them up pretty good. I, I I don't know what it is, but I do know this. I think with all the injuries that they have gone through this year, coming back next year, their their pitching staff is going to be a lot better. Sure. Just just looking at it from a. You know, having a Severino and a Herman back in the middle of that mix. Jordan Montgomery, forget about the last outing against Tampa. He's been really good this year. I mean, they, they're going to have, I mean, top-line bullpen. They're going to have a top-line starting rotation. And then they're going to get a new shortstop, and they may have a new catcher. That I think that would be it. And then the question is whether or not, you know, you also have Aaron Hicks coming back next year. So mm-hmm. I would think that. Maybe if we said this now the last three years. This could be the last year for Brett Gardner. No, I knows? know. I know. And he's been really, really good down the stretch. He's uh, been good every year the last three years, and he's had so many good moments. Yeah. And here's the one thing I do know about Brett Gardner. He ain't dogging it down first base. No, absolutely not. Never. No, he's not going to ever embarrass that uniform like Calabria Torres I embarrassed the uniform on thing Friday. There. Remember that whole back thing he used to do at the top of the Well, Because well, he got mad at, at a bad uh, umpire's yeah. call or whatever. That's a little weird. That whole thing is a little strange. But outside of that, he's been a great Yankee. Hey, look, man, that guy wears the jersey like like every Yankee fan should want every player on that team to wear the jersey. I understand. Let's go to John in Bergen County. What's going on, John? Hi, how are you guys doing tonight? What's up, man? What's happening, Johnny? 
Nothing much. Uh, so I just have a quick question about tonight's game with Cole pitching on yeah. the mound tonight. I mean, we pay him $36 million a year for this moment right here, obviously. Mm-hmm. But he has the worst ERA against the Red Sox out of any team this year with a 4.91 ERA. And he hasn't pitched great in, uh, he hasn't pitched great at Fenway. We know that. Yep. Yeah. So at what point in time, if we see him struggling tonight, do you think Boone makes the decision? to potentially pull him. I mean, quickly. I mean, and we're talking struggling like it's four earned runs in the second inning type of thing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's then he's out. I mean, there's no – you can't stick with a guy with the track record and then he comes out and then lays an egg like that, especially when you've got a bullpen that is is – He's got long guys, got short guys. I mean, you go to Michael King probably right away. Kind of like us around here. We got long, long guys. guys. We got long guys. guys and short guys. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, thick guys and skinny guys, the whole thing. Yeah, but here's the thing. A lot of that will depend on what the Yankees offense is doing. You know, the Yankee offense last Friday in Boston basically jumped all over, uh, I think it was Evaldi that night too as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Cole kind of coasted. Was it was it Evaldi who pitched that, that same night? I think I, I, think I don't remember. Same night. I don't remember. But you know, all right. So his last start in Boston. Yeah. You know, he basically cruised through that game because you know he gave up three runs, but yeah. they, the Yankee offense exploded. Well, that's what you I mean. think. A lot, of, a lot of that will determine whether or not you know Cole, how deep Cole goes into this game. Does he go through the lineup three times? Oh, well, he better. Jesus Christ! I mean, he, he... I mean, but I, I could see though if it's a. Fifth inning, and it's a two to one game, and he's struggling a little bit with his command and stuff like that. I could see them yanking him after five. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can go over every single scenario possible, but we're not going to really know and have an opinion on it until we see it play out. Let's go to Jack and Belmore. What's going on, Jack? Good morning, guys. Hey, man. What's going on? Hey. The OFC Boomer is a mercenary. That's his story. Right. He wins, he goes, he takes a break, and then he gets his stock back up and gets paid even more. Billy Bean is your guy. He's Met farmhand. That's what the Mets need. Because well, Wouldn't you want the Mets to win? Like, wouldn't you take it if Theo Epstein won a World Series with the Mets and moved on, though? Because then at least you'd have the World Series. Uh, yeah, I would, but I think Billy Bean can do the same thing with stability. Yeah, maybe. Stay there for a long time. That's why is he gonna? Why is he going to finally choose now to leave, though? Money. It would have to be money. But there's been many opportunities he could have gotten paid. Yeah, I mean, but years. this would have to be like uh, one of these big money contracts to come here and do it I, and have all the resources that he doesn't have out in Oakland. I, I never heard him saying he wanted to move until now I hear these rumors. So, But the other thing, too, is, right, uh, Oakland's got a, an issue with the stadium and all that other nonsense going on out there. Boomer probably knows. He, has, he always has those people that tell him things. <laughs> He knows something. Yeah, he always has those people that tell him things. Yeah, yeah, you, Jack, you are right. I'm laughing because you're right. Boomer's got sources. That's what it is. He's got an ear to the ground. He's got sources. And I don't know how strong his source is on Theo Epstein, but who knows? I'm, my, I'm not. All I'm saying is that there's a reason, you know, he's a mercenary. He keeps moving on. I just wonder. You know, and we went to the Chicago Cub, you know, abyss the last time around, and look what happened. Maybe Brian Cashman steps down if they lose tonight, and then the Mets hire him. Eight seven seven. Oh gosh! <laughs> or Theo goes to the Yankees then. Oh, imagine that. Oh, Brian Cashman steps down. Brian Cashman sucks. Goes to the Mets, and then Theo goes to the Yankees. You know, I've watched Brian Cashman put this team together over the last three years, and yeah, okay, the beginning of this year they were shorthanded from the left side of the plate for the short porch. I know. Oh my God. I just, I want to get, I want to have an aneurysm when you think about it. But, yeah. um, you know, he has always made trades at the trade deadline that have come through. I, I think even though these guys, Rizzo and Gallo haven't been great Rizzo. offensively, they both have been great defensively. And, and by the way, they also do lengthen the lineup and that's, Oh that's yeah. They're lengthening the lineup. Yeah, bad, you're hitting them all today. When you want man. to lengthen the lineup. This oh. is what you do. You lengthen we the are, lineup. Like if you're playing baseball, cliche, bingo, boomer and I have, or Please. somebody won, let's just put it that way. Oh, we're doing it on purpose. Of course. I yeah. know because it's a big preview day here with Yankees and Red Sox. As we you get know, to it will be interesting again, because you know what we love about moments like this is, is we all sit there and we play manager. Oh yeah, and who who do we what who do we yank out of the game? What is the lineup? What are we trying to do? Do we bunt? Don't we bunt? Do we, you know, I, I love what Gallo did the other day. You know, they they got the shift on. Take a bunt. You know, I mean, what is wrong with that? 
I mean, and now if if you're in that situation again, do it again. Who cares? Just get on base and win the freaking game. I was a sophomore in college when I was assaulted. I was only four. I've attended many parole hearings for my mother's killer. I felt helpless, but now I have a voice. Because I'm not alone. Because I can. I Can Crime Victims Assistance Network provides comprehensive victim services, including counseling and assistance at parole hearings free of charge to victims and survivors of violence. Visit ICAN-Foundation.org. We're here to help. The project was supported by funding awarded by Federal Grant Fund 2019-V2GX0053 through the Cal OES. Many Wall Streeters are predicting the inflation plane is ready to take off. At Owning, we still have a few refi seats left with 30-year fixed 2 and 3 quarter percent rate in APR with no closing costs on them. If the experts are right and the inflation plane flies high, APRs this low may be a distant dream. Don't mess around. Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com before the refi market flies completely away from you. Maybe the experts are wrong and rates don't go up any higher. But if they're right and the plane is flying with mortgage rates reaching the fours, you'll kick yourself hard that you didn't grab a seat now. Don't be a dummy. Save the money. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. Subject to credit approval. Call 833-852-6464 for terms and conditions. Equal housing lender. Call 833-2-OWNING for a 30-year fixed refi with a 2 and 3 quarter percent rate in APR today. That's 833-2-OWNING or owning.com. Hey, Los Angeles. We have a brand new 7-Eleven in our town. Pause for celebration. Now open on 9210 South Sepulveda Boulevard. Find all the classic favorites like Big Bite Hot Dogs, Pizza, Taquitos, Wings, Big Gulp, and Slurpees. You know, everything you need to get back on the go. And make sure to check out their Bigger Than Ever Coffee program featuring cappuccinos, espressos, cold brew, and nitro coffee. And you can go ahead and pair that with some of the delicious fresh bakery items like cookies, croissants, and muffins. Visit our brand new 7-Eleven. Now open 9210 South Sepulveda Boulevard. It's the morning show with Boomer Esiason and Greg Giannotti. Boomer and Geo. Hey, by the way, thinking of the, where the Mets are right now. So the Mets are where, and I'm going to give you a local team, and I know that you love this local team. Yeah. Where the Islanders were before they hired Lou Lamarillo and. Nobody Ledecky. cares about hockey, Boomer. Shut up! Where <laughs> Malkin and Ledecky came in and they had to make some changes. Now, Gar Snow made some great picks as GM. Don't get me wrong, but he was hamstrung because of the previous ownership, and you know they they were trying to just you know keep the money down, and they were trying to get a new building, and they could never get a new building. So, you know, the Islanders had to go through kind of somewhat of a change, and they went out and they got maybe the most respected hockey guy in all of the NHL to come in and lay the law down, and I mean Lou Lamarillo lays the law down. You know, there's no he doesn't talk a lot. Doesn't give a lot of interviews, but when he does give an interview, he'll tell you exactly what he's thinking. And when you play for him, there's only one way to play, and that's balls to the wall, or you're not going to play. And it's got to be a 200-foot game, and he's going to run it a certain way. There's going to be limited appearances for the players, limited uh, press accessibility. So who's the Mets? But here's Lula the deal. Amarillo. And I know, and I know, hockey is completely different than Major League Baseball, but. That's who the Mets need. Whoever that person is, whether it's Billy Bean, whether it's Theo Epstein, it's got to be somebody that's going to go in there and basically say, this is the way it's going to be done. Because the Islanders had a culture in the 80s. They were a great team, one of the greatest teams in the history of the league. They lost their way the next 25 years, whatever it was. And then all of a sudden, Lou Lamarillo gets here and everything changes. And he hires a legitimate Stanley winning coach, Stanley Cup winning coach. And... He's been able to keep this team extremely relevant through two very difficult years and has them locked and loaded again for this year. So I, that's, that. the Mets have got to be saying to themselves, we have to kind of, believe it or not, emulate what the Islanders try to do to in order to become the Dodgers. Because they want to become the Dodgers. They want to yeah, become I mean, the they're East going Coast after Dodgers. the two biggest names in the sport. But, so, yeah. Th- well... I, I'm just saying that that's really where they have to go. They they have got to go and find somebody that is legitimately going to be bigger than the franchise that is going to straighten the freaking franchise out. You couldn't find a bigger name on the market than Lou Lamarillo for Ledecky and for Malkin. And that's what they did. And look at the success they've had. You know, they haven't won a Stanley Cup, I know. But you know what? They've been right there the last two years. I know. That's what's so frustrating. That's so hard about, to get back. Right. And when you think about it, they got a new building built. 
They got a new practice facility going on. Now, all of a sudden, everybody wants to come to the Islanders. You know, Jordan Eberle did not want to leave the Islanders and go to the Seattle Kraken in the expansion draft. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be here with his guys. He loved the team. He loved living here. And now, all of a sudden, the Islanders have taken Long Island and made it a, you know, a destination point. So that, so a lot of that has to do with the way a franchise is run. And I always, how much time do we spend talking about stability of a franchise? That's the Yankees have stability. I don't sure. care what anybody says. They have stability. They have expectations. The Islanders have gotten there now, and that's what the Mets have got to do. That's what the Knicks have done with Leon Rose and Tom Thibodeau. Yeah, we'll see what happens this year with them, and that gets but we started that's, sooner. A, later. That again, that's a completely different sport yep. because of the the penchant to have superstars on your team, which they don't really have. They don't have superstars. They have a bunch of lunch pail guys with a lunch pail coach who brought back the 90s Knicks and said, you're going to play tough and you're going to play defense. And we as fans can get behind that even though they may not win a championship. And first preseason game tonight, Knicks and Pacers. All right, Jerry Recco is here with his update. What's happening, Jerry? Powered by Superbook, now open with better odds and favorable prices. We're also brought to you by HomeServe, New York's leading heating and cooling experts. And yes, the Mets are looking for a new manager. The Yankees are not. Instead, they're looking to win one game so that they can get to the divisional round of the playoffs. Yankees, Red Sox, Fenway Park tonight. Manager Aaron Boone. We are truly at the must-win portion of the schedule you know so you know i was asked all weekend about is this must win is yeah tomorrow's must win now they have reached the must win exactly right uh you were asking about Gio urshela last hour or at least discussing uh discussing that here was boone uh urshela seems to be good to go i think we got incredibly fortunate in that situation because as as you know from what i it scared it's really scared me watching him launch in there from my angle. And launching into the dugout. Somebody gave catch. a damn. He sure did. I can say about a few other players in this team. Uh, here he was. He was asked, so you've got Kyle Higashioka catching Garrett Cole tonight. So he was asked, does that mean Gary Sanchez is going to be your DH? No, not necessarily. Again, we'll sit down and do that. But, no, it means he's potentially a bat off the bench. And so that's where they're at, which would mean Joey Gallo, I imagine. In uh, left field. Outfield. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, why right. wouldn't you, you your best defensive left field? Yeah, I understand. I know. No, with the, that thing that they behind him called the Green Monster. The Green Monster. The big tall wall. Uh, here's Garrett Cole. Uh, does it help that you face Boston four times already this season? Familiarity probably has its advantages for me. Probably has its advantages for them. Probably in terms of overall advantage to each side, it's probably relatively balanced. Mm -hmm. His last three starts, he's allowed a bunch of runs. Uh, On September 24th, he started in Boston. He did get the win. He allowed three runs and five hits. He walked three over six. Here was one more in terms of what it's going to be like. Fenway's been rocking this whole year every single time we come. And, you know, the atmosphere is unbelievable. And, you know, we've been playing each other tight. Uh, all year. And got another one tonight. Nathan Avaldi goes for Boston. Pressure, pressure game for sure. It's one of the toughest things about the wild card game. It comes down to one, you know, and next few it's, you know, best of five, best of seven. You got other guys you can rely on, but right now it's, you know, we're, it's a do or die out there. You got to, you got to win this game to move on. All hands on deck. And we don't know about JD Martinez as he rolled his ankle running out to the field the other day. So his status is uncertain. Uh, the other also, thing we don't know is who's playing second base, right? For who? I mean, out third base for the Yankees. Should be third base. Well, you're talking about tonight? Yeah. Isn't Urshela? Well, Urshela's going to be playing short. short. So, so DJ Almeida is out. Right. I would Rugi Odor. Rugi Odor. Rugi Odor. That's Rugi Odor. Likely. Yeah. yeah. I would certainly think so. Plus, he had the big hit the other day to start mm-hmm. that ninth inning. He's uh, had his uh, moments rally. this year, but he hasn't Rugi. been consistently had moments. But he has had his moments. Yes, Rugi he has. Rugi Odor. Odor. And uh, Higashioka is the starting catcher tonight. And you guys mentioned the whole Mets scenario. We'll see if there's any more uh, news on that. Just kind of amazing like, what happens when you take DJ LeMayu out of the lineup and you have Higashioka and Odor now in the lineup. Yeah. yeah I mean, part of this. <laughs> I don't know. It's- it's a, I mean, How about they've that? got a lot of different looks they can throw out there. And yeah. this is one. They need Cole to throw well. They need to hit. Yeah. And then they'll be fine. And so if got they don't, Plenty they of guys in that lineup. They, that, that, that can they match. Do. That they do. Um, last night, Monday Night Football in L.A. after a lightning delay, they did get the play underway. And the Chargers... <laughs> But never mind. Shotgun snap to the Charger quarterback. Line drive throw near sideline over the shoulder. Catch at the goal line. Inside the pylon. Touchdown. It's the running back, Austin Eckler, who got that ball in stride down the near sideline with an over the shoulder catch. 
That is Kevin Harlan, Westwood one on the fan. The Chargers hey. doing everything right in the first half. They how, like, how are the Dolphin fans feeling watching Justin Herbert there, Eddie? Well, Tua did beat him head to head last year. So I need, yeah, <laughs> Tua had a better. So team. suck on that, rich boy. <laughs> I was waiting for that line. Has an yeah. yeah, but you know, would you rather have Justin uh, Herbert uh, right now? I mean, Tua's got this injury thing yeah, going he on now. Doesn't look like he's going. It's like damn, Jimmy up. Garoppolo can't stay on the freaking field. I thought suck on it, rich boy was better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> that was funny. Um, <laughs> Herbert threw the three touchdown passes on the night. 28-14, the Chargers beat the Raiders. Here was Herbert who says we take our cues from our coach, Brandon Staley. It's awesome that he believes in us because everyone in the huddle believes in each other too. And um, Whenever we get into one of those situations, we know that we've got the right play. We know that we've got the right guys. And they're certainly showing that. They're 3-1, as are the Raiders. Derek Carr. Uh, team is very inconsistent with their energy level, especially starting out these games. It's just different every game. You know what I mean? It's just different. But but we haven't started out fast in every game, so it ha- it's something we definitely need to look at. Yeah, he threw for 196 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. And so uh, both teams 3-1. and one. That does it for Week 4. Thursday night, Rams Seahawks from Seattle. You got the Giants and Cowboys on Sunday. Joe Judge with the guys coming up at 9-10. Uh, he was asked about a couple of things, so I guess he did, like a lot of coaches do. They were replicating the noise of the Dome in practice last week. Was able to get them ready. He was asked about how do you replicate things at AT&T Stadium. There's one thing in particular that drives people crazy in the late afternoon games. In terms of recreating the glare of the sun, uh, that's a little bit more difficult, I'd say. I would say that that's kind of hard to do. Yeah, I don't understand got why Schmel Schmel out there with mirrors. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> right. Him and Paulie Dot. Yeah, he's been to Tino, yeah. You know what's crazy? Yeah. Wouldn't shock me. No, no, me neither. <laughs> yeah. I oh, mean, why did they build the stadium that way? I don't know the answer to that. I don't, well, I mean, the sun's got to peer through at some point. Yeah, but you, it's just a matter of these late afternoon games in the fall right. is when it's the most annoying. And yeah, it is. when they actually play games in the fall. Well, yeah, I mean, that too. So, anyway, um, Jet Safety Marcus May arrested for DUI back in February facing charges related to a car accident in Fort Lauderdale. You've got the Jets playing in London against the Falcons this Sunday morning. This was interesting. Broncos head coach Vic Fangio on the Ravens uh, running Lamar Jackson on the final play of the game Sunday as they wanted to seek Baltimore, wanted to secure their record-tying 43rd straight game of 100 rushing yards as a team. Fangio basically said it was a joke. Yeah, I thought it was kind of bullshit, but I expected it from them. <laughs> now, why? Oh, by the way, by the way, wasn't yeah. this the same team that was thrown against the Jets late in the game last week when the Jet they were just absolutely destroying well, them? Well, I'm so I'll get to something like that. Here was Fangio asked why it wasn't a surprise to him. Because I just know how they operate. That's just their. Uh, you know, mode of operation there. Player safety is secondary. Okay, so now I'm going to get to John Harbaugh, who basically calls him hypocrite. You're throwing the ball in the end zone. With Ten seconds left. I don't know that there's a 16-point touchdown that's going to be possible right there. So, <laughs> you know, that didn't have anything to do with winning the game. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you can take it back to what you're talking about. I, I, I'll take it back to the week before right. the Jets. They were smoking yep. the Jets, and late in the game, they're still throwing the ball. Yep. And I understood why he was throwing the ball with Teddy Bridgewater, because he wanted to you know, give him, you know, more throws, more plays, more, you know, a, a fourth quarter but type. But still, if you're going to preach player safety, you're going to be uh, completely yeah. different. Exactly. So, look, I know exactly why John Harbaugh did it. I would have done it because I want my guys to, like, you know, take pride in something. And I want them to know that every week we're going to go out and do this and we're going to keep this thing going. And it, I agree with that. My one question would be, though, Lamar Jackson came into the game with a sore back. You run him? Yeah, yeah. but he ran around the sideline right. and he took a knee. It, was, it wasn't like he got hit. Yeah, well, but he could have. They, they you lose they, him on a play like that, oof. I guarantee you they told everybody, look, we're going to run Lamar around the corner. You make sure you block everybody. And they're not going to call a holding penalty or anything like that in that situation, which they, they didn't do. So, hey, look, you know, Big Fangio, too bad. It's the NFL. Nobody feels sorry for you. That's, That's just right. the way it is. They're professionals. Yes. Um, Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer talked to the media yesterday. I thought the media down there did a good job. They asked a lot of questions about this before they – he tried in a couple of different spots to answer the question and then kind of veer towards the next game, and then the next question came. And then finally towards the end of it, it was all about football. I thought they did a good job. Um, this video that was out there with him with the woman in the bar, he was asked about, of course, his wife and his kids. What about your, how about your family? Did you also – did you feel a need to apologize to your family? Yeah. Yeah, of course I did. Yeah, that's not me, and that's uh, uh, 
Oh, yeah. They were upset. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they did. Uh, and he says he knows better. I remember when Trevor told me he was going to go to Vegas for his bachelor party. I mean, I was just like, gosh, man, be careful and surround yourself and because I've seen this happen. And now he says he's the Trevor one that did Lawrence, the dumb though, probably went out there and splashed himself in holy water for four days. Exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. <laughs> you're, you're probably right. Um, you mentioned the Knicks tonight. They have their preseason opener with the Pacers. And we mentioned last hour, Luca Vildoza. Apparently an ankle injury is where Tom Thibodeau said, all right, see Enough. ya. So that was a four-year deal, not guaranteed, $13 million. He's been waived. All right, very good. I was a sophomore in college when I was assaulted. I was only four. I've attended many parole hearings for my mother's killer. I felt helpless, but now I have a voice. Because I'm not alone. Because I can. I Can Crime Victims Assistance Network provides comprehensive victim services, including counseling and assistance at parole hearings free of charge to victims and survivors of violence. Visit ICAN-Foundation.org. We're here to help. The project was supported by funding awarded by Federal Grant Fund 2019-V2GX0053 through the Cal OES. Many Wall Streeters are predicting the inflation plane is ready to take off. At Owning, we still have a few refi seats left with 30-year fixed 2 and 3 quarter percent rate in APR with no closing costs on them. If the experts are right and the inflation plane flies high, APRs this low may be a distant dream. Don't mess around. Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com before the refi market flies completely away from you. Maybe the experts are wrong and rates don't go up any higher. But if they're right and the plane is flying with mortgage rates reaching the fours, you'll kick yourself hard that you didn't grab a seat now. Don't be a dummy. Save the money. NMLS 2611. Licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. Subject to credit approval. Call 833-852-6464 for terms and conditions. Equal housing lender. Call 833-2-OWNING for a 30-year fixed refi with a 2 and 3 quarter percent rate in APR today. That's 833-2-OWNING or owning.com. Hey, Los Angeles. We have a brand new 7-Eleven in our town. Pause for celebration. Now open on 9210 South Sepulveda Boulevard. Find all the classic favorites like Big Bite Hot Dogs, Pizza, Taquitos, Wings, Big Gulp, and Slurpees. You know, everything you need to get back on the go. And make sure to check out their Bigger Than Ever Coffee program featuring cappuccinos, espressos, cold brew, and nitro coffee. And you can go ahead and pair that with some of the delicious fresh bakery items like cookies, croissants, and muffins. Visit our brand new 7-Eleven. Now open, 9210 South Sepulveda Boulevard. It's the morning show with Boomer Esiason and Greg Giannotti. Boomer and Geo. Now, this is an interesting one to me. Did you see what's going on with the Washington football team trainer? This this is one of those stories that, like, is sort of quiet but could be huge type of thing. So the DEA raided the Washington football team's facility last week, and now their head trainer is on leave. So what the hell's going on there? So then when Ron Rivera was asked about There's it. There's a lot of stuff going on down there. I mean, but seriously. Yeah. So the, when Ron Rivera was asked about it, he kept repeating the same phrase, which was Ryan Vermillion, who was the name of the trainer, has been placed on administrative leave due to an ongoing criminal investigation that is unrelated to the team, end quote. So he's this guy selling drugs out of the facility? Well, I mean, you know, the DEA is involved, so you would obviously there's some, and he's a trainer, so he may have access to steroids. certain things. Could be steroids, could be HGH, could mm. be uh, you know some hardcore uh, painkillers, could mm. be any of that crap. You never know. Hardcore painkillers, I maybe. Mean, you, know, you realize that all of these organizations have like 500 people in them. Yeah, I know. And every organization is just like any any other organization where you can have one or two people go sideways on you without even knowing it. And then when you find out after you get raided by the <sighs> DEA, I mean, you know, it's like, uh, excuse me, what? <laughs> Let me tell you, though, if he if it's found out to be performance enhancing stuff, I mean, if if it's performance enhancing stuff and it's steroids, if it's HGH, if it's stuff like that. It's related to the team well, because he's the trainer. Yeah, but he's saying that there is pending, I guess, pending criminal charges for something that he's doing away from the team. So, <clears> could, <throat> I mean, it could be a, a myriad of things, you know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I know, but it's, I mean, this to me is a this this could be a big one. Right. This could be so there could be a lot of a lot of stuff going on here so with this. They, you know, when I play, I, I, you know, we might have had an equipment manager or something steal some t-shirts. Something that was about, about it. it. Yeah. 
There had to be more going on than that. Yeah, back then, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> of course I mean, but was. we all, we all, when I was in Cincinnati, we got one pair of shorts, one jock, one yeah. pair of socks, and a t-shirt. Yeah, but there was a lot was of guys it. who were doing steroids back in that era. Yeah, but they weren't getting them from the team. No. We, but I'm just saying, we only, we only got one t-shirt, one jock, one pair of shorts, yeah. and one pair of socks. Like a high school team. That was it. Yeah. Does a high school team even get that? Yeah, no, they do. Yeah, they do. I think that's it. Yeah, well, you get well. They probably get more than that now. <laughs> you know, think yeah. about it. We used to get these these windbreakers. Those were the nicest things, but you had to give them back at the end of the year. We I love the Letterman that. jackets. Oh, those are great too. Did Walk you guys around. have uh, red ones with white uh, leather sleeves? That's right. I still have one. So yeah, we wore red and white as well. So. Yeah, red with and then the the big B right here. Walk oh, around with oh, that man. Yeah. You were the man. You were the man. You were you at know? the bottom of the pile. That's right, bottom of the pile. You put like the championship stuff on the back. If you won a championship, they right. sew that in. Maybe get an all county patch. Yeah. Is there anything better than that? You didn't have one of those. No, of course I didn't. I got into one game at my junior year. Yeah, but you, you were there. You got, the, you got the captain's award. <clears throat> that was in baseball. That was the coach's award. I the didn't get anything award. in football. No, nothing. They didn't give you anything? No, I thought I was going to get most improved player my junior year. I told you that. Because everyone was like, oh, it's going to be you. It's going to be you. Cause you I were all excited for most improved prep. I was. Hell yeah, I was, man. Are you kidding me? Because yeah. I walked in there. I was getting my ass kicked my junior year. I was wearing my knee pads upside down and everything. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, it got better. Got to a couple games, and that was that. I thought I was going to get it, and they gave it to the team manager. So how can he get it? He's not playing. He's because the team, the team, the team. It's like when you got the coach's award for doing the book. Like I would <laughs> yeah, think, hell that yeah, because I was like, guys a coach. on the team that actually played are like, why is he getting a coach's award? Because when he's they not knew playing? there was no discussion. There was no 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 anybody was no no, no argument with that at all. None because I was like a coach. I was there. I was cheering everybody on, doing yeah. a book. I had a sling on. I was throwing up the balls for Neil Heaton to hit with the fungo. I was the man. I was anything I could do right. to chip in with the team at that Unselfish, point. Unselfish, baby. That's right. I wasn't leaving because things uh, were weren't going my way. I was doing everything I could to help out the team. It's a different time in my life. <laughs> with softball, I got out of there the second things weren't going my way. Man. Totally different deal. Uh, so when Joe Judge comes on, obviously he's coming on after a win. He's not going to come on after they were 0-3. He's going to come on after a win today. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm still concerned. If I'm Jason Garrett, I'm still concerned about whether I finish the year with this team. Because there was a point in this game on Sunday where they had 10 points. It's the fourth quarter. They were looking at 0-4 in the face. There was no way he was coming back as the offensive coordinator if that game ended the way it did. Now, two, it didn't. Yeah, well, it two didn't. things To me, two things happened. In this game, especially late in the game, number one, their pass protection was really good. Yeah. Really good. And number two, uh, I mean, Daniel Jones was literally firing missiles mm-hmm. all over the place. Sure. And he looked he looked as good as he's ever looked as a quarterback here. And that was a tough win against a tough defense on the road. But all that gets wiped away, you know, this weekend when they go to Dallas. Because Dallas is going to put up 30 points. You know that. I mean, every week they've been doing it. And Dak Prescott has just been absolutely phenomenal. Like, I was asked yesterday, you know, who's your early season MVP? I mean, you know, well, Kyler Murray's right there. Justin Herbert's right there. Aaron Rodgers is right there. Dak Prescott is right yeah. there. I mean, and, you know, I'm probably missing a couple guys here or there. Maybe Tom Brady, you could say, as well. Uh, he got off to a great start the first couple games. But, I mean, they're, they're, they're going up against a really good offensive team this week. And we knew that going into the season. I remember saying... It's all about Dallas's defense and whether or not their defense, you know, can at least stop a couple teams so Dallas doesn't have to score 34 points every single game. But man, their offense has just been motoring. I mean, right, Tony Pollard has been like shot out of a cannon. Yeah, he's their best running back. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you their wide receivers are tremendous. I'm wondering if Amari Cooper's playing this week. Uh, there was a little bit of an issue. Uh, I don't know if it was hamstring or something towards the end of last week's game. So maybe that could be that would be a break for the Giants if he's not playing. But they still, you know, they still got a bunch of guys like their tight ends. All of a sudden, are now starting to become more a part of the game plan than ever before. And Dak Prescott's playing like lights out, like he was prior to him getting hurt last year. Did Joe Judge hire Jason Garrett? I don't believe so. No. So you think that was a Mara thing? Because I think Joe Judge wanted Brian Dable. Oh, okay. 
Because well, Brian, the Bills. He, yeah, well, yeah, well, he and Brian knew each other from, I believe, New England. And Brian was at the Bills. I don't think the, the Bills were like, nah, you're not leaving. You're staying right here. And that's one of the reasons why I believe that Josh Allen is as good as he is, is because he's had the same offense coordinator since day one. And he's been in that offense. And now, man, you saw it again last week. And he's played in like three really bad weather games already. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's just, he's like indestructible, <clears throat> that kid. That kid is just whipping a ball all over the place. Don't you and, find it interesting, though, that Joe Judge didn't hire Jason Garrett? Yeah, I don't I don't like it, but I know John Mara has, you know, fond feelings for Jason because Jason played here. But I'm saying as far as his future goes. I mean, well, I mean, you want to see you want to see growth, especially from your quarterback. And I think the quarterback had his signature game thus far last week. Yeah, but it's got to keep going. And they got the rough part of their schedule coming that's, up. That's the, the bad part for them. And I remember when we first had Joe Judge on, it was right before the season started. And we talked about the fact that he had two games in five days. Yeah. And two games against, you know, a, a Denver team. That's a good team. It's not a great team. We, we saw their flaws last week against a really good team, the Baltimore Ravens. And, you know, and, and then they had the Reds, uh, the, not the Reds, the Washington football team. They should have beat them. They had a chance to beat them, and they didn't. They collapsed. It, see, the thing that concerns me more about what's going on here, I thought the defense was going to be a lot better than it's supposed to be. If we're only having Joe Judge on after wins, when's the next time that we have him on? And does he even come on because it could be they could be, like, buried at that point? You can't. He can't think that way. I'm not saying to him. I'm not even concerned about what he's thinking. Right. I'm talking about just from our standpoint. So they're not going to beat the Cowboys. They're not going to beat the Rams. December fifth, after they beat the Dolphins. You said that they were not going to beat the so Saints. Did, yeah, so did you. So no, but I'm just telling you're sitting here saying they're not going to beat anybody. I could tell you that you know maybe this was a a, a turn the corner game. Turn the corner game. Yeah. All right. So how many? What would their record be if they lost every game from here until December fifth? Now, let's see. That's a Cowboys, Rams, Panthers, Chiefs, Raiders. So that's five. five. So Bucks, Eagles, one and eight. Yeah, you know, don't say that. But I know we were talking about this after last week's game. Yeah, where Jabril Peppers goes out there for the. The coin toss into overtime. Yeah, he goes, give us that mother bleeper or whatever. We right, take exactly. that mother bleeper. Yeah, because you know, because we don't want the defense <clears> on the field. <laughs> <laughs> we, want, yeah. we want we want our offense to go win it. And yeah, they did. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll have him on again. Looks great. Who? Uh, to Shakan Bark. Shakan Bark. Shakan. Shakan. Shaka Shaka Khan. <laughs> Should we play that for Joe Judge? See if we can get a reaction out of him. We're not going to get a reaction out of him. No? No. You don't think so? No, I think he's all buttoned up right now. Nah, he has some fun, but like a little bit of fun with us. He gives us like 10% of fun. That's it. 90% serious, 10% of fun. I'm just trying to think, how are you going to start it? Because I know it's got to be something with like results or something, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him that. I'll just say, when add- are you going to fire Jason Garrett? <laughs> just open it up just like that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that Urban Meyer video? Oh, that'd yeah. be a good one. I'll oh, take a look at that stuff, painted. okay? You know, yeah, it's not, not really something that I'm looking at, okay? You know, he could do what he wants to do. I don't know what's going on in Jacksonville, okay? <laughs> All right, look. These guys are going to do what they want to do in the situ- certain situations. And you know, down there, he decided he was going to be at a bar. He gets grinded upon. You know, there's a butt on his pelvic area. And then all of a sudden, the video's out there viral. This is what I tell our guys, okay? I tell our guys, there's cameras on all the time, guys. Look, there's cameras. You, you can't go out to a bar anymore and get grinded upon your pelvic area. You can't... Someone's going to put that up on social media. They're going to put that up on InstaFace. They're going to put that up on Snapper Chatter. They're going to put that up there. And then you're going to have to deal with it, and your teammate's going to have to answer questions about it. Okay? Snapper Chatter. <laughs> That's what's going to happen, okay? All right. I was a sophomore in college when I was assaulted. I was only four. I've attended many parole hearings for my mother's killer. I felt helpless, but now I have a voice. Because I'm not alone. Because I can. I Can Crime Victims Assistance Network provides comprehensive victim services, including counseling and assistance at parole hearings free of charge to victims and survivors of violence. Visit ICAN-Foundation.org. We're here to help. The project was supported by funding awarded by Federal Grant Fund 2019-VTGX0053 through the Cal OES. Many Wall Streeters are predicting the inflation plane is ready to take off. At Owning, we still have a few refi seats left with 30-year fixed 2 and 3 quarter percent rate in APR with no closing costs on them. If the experts are right and the inflation plane flies high, APRs this low may be a distant dream. Don't mess around. Call 833-2-OWNING or go to owning.com before the refi market flies completely away from you.
Maybe the experts are wrong and rates don't go up any higher. But if they're right and the plane is flying with mortgage rates reaching the fours, you'll kick yourself hard that you didn't grab a seat now. Don't be a dummy. Save the money. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. Subject to credit approval. Call 833-852-6464 for terms and conditions. Equal housing lender. Call 833-2-OWNING for a 30-year fixed refi with a 2 and 3 quarter percent rate in APR today. That's 833-2-OWNING or owning.com. Hey, Los Angeles. We have a brand new 7-Eleven in our town. Pause for celebration. Now open on 9210 South Sepulveda Boulevard. Find all the classic favorites like Big Bite hot dogs, pizza, taquitos, wings, Big Gulp, and Slurpees. You know, everything you need to get back on the go. And make sure to check out their Bigger Than Ever coffee program featuring cappuccinos, espressos, cold brew, and nitro coffee. And you can go ahead and pair that with some of the delicious fresh bakery items like cookies, croissants, and muffins. Visit our brand new 7-Eleven. Now open 9210 South Sepulveda Boulevard. It's the morning show with Boomer Esiason and Greg Giannotti. Boomer and Geo. Keeping up with the flood of news every single day can be quite stressful. There is climate change happening. There's the pandemic, labor movements, Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend. Hi, I am Gideon Resnick, host of Crooked Media's What a Day. Each week, Travel Anderson, Priyanka Arabindi, Josie Duffy, Rice, and I are going to break down the biggest news stories of the day in a way that hopefully doesn't always make you want to cry. New episodes of What a Day drop every weekday at 5 a.m. Eastern. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I was a sophomore in college when I was assaulted. I was only four. I've attended many parole hearings for my mother's killer. I felt helpless, but now I have a voice. Because I'm not alone. Because I can. I Can Crime Victims Assistance Network provides comprehensive victim services, including counseling and assistance at parole hearings free of charge to victims and survivors of violence. Visit ICAN-Foundation.org. We're here to help. The project was supported by funding awarded by Federal Grant Fund 2019-V2GX0053 through the Cal OES. Many Wall Streeters are predicting the inflation plane is ready to take off. At Owning, we still have a few refi seats left with 30-year fixed 2 and 3 quarter percent rate in APR with no closing costs on them. If the experts are right and the inflation plane flies high, APRs this low may be a distant dream. Don't mess around. Call 833-2-OWNING or go to owning.com before the refi market flies completely away from you. Maybe the experts are wrong and rates don't go up any higher. But if they're right and the plane is flying with mortgage rates reaching the fours, you'll kick yourself hard that you didn't grab a seat now. Don't be a dummy. Save the money. NMLS 2611. Licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. Subject to credit approval. Call 833-852-6464 for terms and conditions. Equal housing lender. Call 833-2-OWNING for a 30-year fixed refi with a 2 and 3 quarter percent rate in APR today. That's 833-2-OWNING or owning.com.